does seem to me that there is a certain cultural problem with apologizing. But some people just won't apologize. It's yes. almost as if they feel that by apologizing they admit guilt. Yes. They don't, want, they don't really want to feel guilty for something that they didn't cause or aren't responsible for. I'm not sure what that is or where it comes from. I just have noticed that. Well, it is. It's a. It's an ongoing issue. So there is. There is a kind of a, an orientation toward apologies. Some people. Some leaders believe uh, that apologies undermine and break their credibility. Yeah, I've heard apology is a, is a sign of weakness. Yes, that's that's one of that's one of the things. Uh, the difficulty with that is, um, uh, if you talk to the people who have to interact with people who believe that, they get really mad at those people because they know they've made a mistake and they won't apologize and it, it damages the relationship. Yeah. You know, when people think you made a mistake and you're unwilling to recognize it, they go, some of them go after you like a dog after a bone. Yeah. They're not going to let it, uh, let up because they know you were wrong, kind of the point that Doug was making, you know, they're going to hold on to that. You have to sort that out for yourself. Uh, it took me a while. I, I apologize for all kinds of stuff. I have no hesitancy to apologize because I'm not interested in that particular side. I'm interested in actually having something work. And if an apology will work, not as a manipulation, because you can't manipulate apologies. It's got to be an authentic, genuine, I am apologizing for that. It is my, I am responsible for this, and I'm willing to take the hit for it. Uh, gives you an immense amount of freedom and an immense amount of power and people do appreciate that you're somebody who's willing to do that but it is a, a thing that you you have to personally work that out mm -hmm. for yourself in terms of where you're going to stand on that. I think it's a really great point to raise not everybody's willing to do that well I just sitting here thinking about that sort of the, the culturalness of apologizing and I think that not only are apologies associated with failure they're also associated with wrongdoing, mm -hmm. which is, I think, different from failure. I mean, wrongdoing can lead to failure. Um, and that, I think that's part of what complicates it, too, is like if you're apologizing, you're admitting that you did something wrong or you failed. And it really it really needs to be that way. And, and now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, to me, there's a fine line between acknowledge, acknowledgement and apology. I think they sit very close next to each other. Well, they can. An acknowledgement would be I'm acknowledging it's 10 minutes of one, um, which is an acknowledgement. I'm not apologizing it's 10 minutes to one. Um, so the acknowledgement is really to get at what's so. And then the apology is a, is a, requ is, is, is a request for forgiveness. It's an admission of responsibility. I'm personally responsible, personally accountable for this. Uh, even if I didn't do it, accountability has nothing to do with whether you did it or not. It's are you willing to be the one who's going to be accountable for that? Mm -hmm. okay. And then moving forward with that. And, and, it's, and for most, and I think you're right, in many cases, uh, apology is an admission of wrongdoing. You, okay, I'm wrong. I got it, I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, where you're committed to being right about stuff, you will not apologize. Uh, because being right is more important than the apolo what the apology will provide in terms of moving forward or getting something to work. Uh, you see that it's, you know, uh, and frequently we don't get the apologies at the public level and, until there's so much evidence for it, you know, like the, all the scandals around the politicians and stuff, until you, you, don't, you have no choice but to apologize. We're talking about apologies that you're offering free and clear on your own. You're taking them on uh, without necessarily being nailed on a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. There's something actually really freeing about thinking about doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize to everyone. Because <laughs> I probably owe an apology for something. Well, an authentic apology uh, makes you uh, vul you're vulnerable. You know, uh, it's contrary. Uh, it's contrary. Most people are, as you pointed out, we don't want to fail. We want to look good. We don't want to look bad. And apology just flies right in the face of that. You know, uh, it does take a certain amount of courage. Yeah, exactly. And people know, but that's why. And people know that. 
that's why they have part of the impact that they have is you're vulnerable and it takes courage to do that and in the in our culture in particular other cultures is admitting that you made a mistake or it's, it's like that's like really you know that's why everybody's watching you you watch what happens with presidents presidents who apologize uh, let's take it David Letterman David Letterman apologized for his infidelity and his indiscretion boom gone completely right up front about it. I did that, I did this, I'm having a hard time at home. You know, it's like completely handled it. Tiger Woods waits three months amid all kinds of speculation and he probably did more damage to his reputation than if he had just come right out the first day and said, you know, oh God, did I screw up? Because, you know, people, we all screw up and we know we screw up. So it makes it a little different. It's part of why they're so powerful. There's a book I also recommend. There's a book out called Effective Apology that uh, it gives you more access to uh, apology. Yeah, it's like the apology of, I'm sorry you think I'm wrong. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, that's not an apology. I'm sorry I got caught. And yeah, right. Get, uh, our graphics designer upstairs, she gets this all the time because most of the conversations with her start like this. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. But I need this graphic tomorrow, and it has to be done. And it's like there's a system to get graphics done, and know two weeks ahead of time, and know what you want said. But most of the time, it's I'm sorry, I screwed up. I, you know, I'm sorry that I screwed yeah, up, anyway. but you're screwed. You know, it's yeah. like you can't continually do that. And no, that's right. Words, I'm sorry to, to. No, it's right. It down becomes an excuse or a cliche, and it has no effect. Um, Yeah. Or you know, you don't know you need to apologize. That's right. So I think that kind of goes back to the closure conversation where you do have a debrief or some type of kind of closure so that you can kind of talk about what went well, what didn't go well, so that you might find out that you screwed something up. Yeah. You didn't know about it, so now I feel like I should apologize or you know, I, I need to apologize. So I think sometimes we rely on people who think like, oh, they owe me an apology or something, because that person might not even know they did something. Well, I think it's also inside a closure conversation, it's worth going up to you and say, you owe me an apology. And here's what I think you owe me an apology for. And then you let them know, this is what I think you owe me an apology for. Which is a, one way you could look at it. It's like a request for an apology, but you could actually have that conversation. If I just go up to her and say, look, I think you owe me an apology, she'll say, for what? It's the conversation is, I think you owe me an apology, and here's what I think you owe me the apology for. So you give them the whole thing, and then they look at that and they say, oh, you're right, I apologize. And if they disagree, then they'll say, oh, I don't think I owe an apology for that. Oh, well, then I think we need to talk. So it gives you the opening for the conversation that will complete it and bring you closure. People don't know to do that. We don't know to do that. Sometimes you know that you're not being treated in a way that's appropriate to you, then you would have to, if you wanted it, and didn't want to just hold people uh, at fault for not delivering it, it would be appropriate to have the conversation with them to get it. So what if you think someone owes you an apology and they don't, they think you should apologize to them, then you're at a total impasse. How could you have a conversation with them? Uh, but that would be the conversation is to find out, geez, oh, wow, you think I should apologize for that. Oh, okay, I do. I got it. I see how that did that. I will. I do apologize for that. I had no idea that that did that to you. So what if they don't think they should? They, think they, they should won't. Happen? They may not. But you will now know, oh, I got it. So they don't have that same interpretation for that conversation. I got it. So you can either hold it against them that they don't apologize or get that they don't see it that way and they're not going to apologize. Then you have a choice as to how you want to proceed from there. There's no guarantee in any of these conversations that the thing is going to go a particular way. You can apologize and people still say, I got your apology and I'm never going to forgive you and I'm always going to hold it against you and that's how it's going to go.